Well, hello and welcome. Uh, if you're hearing these words and seeing this video, it's because you're watching. So you're here. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos uh, talking about different aspects of the Renaissance. Uh, there'll be five videos total. Uh, so if you are here for the whole thing, uh, there'll be five different videos that you'll ultimately watch. Uh, what we're going to take a look at in these five videos uh, are overall the topic of the Renaissance. In today's video, we're going to simply talk about what the Renaissance was and where it began. Uh, the second video will address uh, some of the changes uh, that were represented by the Renaissance, or that at least we identify as being changes of the Renaissance. And then there'll be a video that highlights uh, Renaissance art, a video that will highlight Renaissance writing. And then the final video on, in the series will address the uh, printing press using movable type and the impact that, that had on this movement. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to join me uh, for all five videos. Here we go. So if you see on, on this first slide, it's got the term Renaissance, and then the question, was it even a thing? Now, one of the things that we'll try to think about as we move through this series uh, was, even though we look back on this period of time over 500 years ago and attribute a lot of uh, different things to it and see it as this big movement and, and a, a time of momentous change, uh, some question uh, whether the people actually living during that time would have been able to recognize what we today consider to be a time of change. Because uh, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that the Renaissance period itself took place over several hundred years. Uh, so when we talk about changes um, that are the Renaissance, uh, we're actually grouping together events that happened over a pretty long span of time. So would people at the time have actually recognized these changes or not? So that's something to keep in mind as we work through this topic of the Renaissance. Uh, so where I want to get started with today's uh, lesson is just to simply define the term Renaissance itself. I think one of the easiest uh, definitions to use for Renaissance is the term rebirth, uh, because it really speaks to what the Renaissance represented. Um, essentially, if you look at Europe, and keep in mind, this is a, the European Renaissance, uh, the Renaissance period itself is usually identified as taking place between uh, roughly the 1300s up to about 1600. Now, depending on where you were in Europe, uh, it might have phased in at, at different points in time. But one thing to note, uh, roughly the 1300s to 1600. Uh, so not only is that a big span of time, uh, but that's you know well over 500 years ago. And it's important to note uh, what had been going on in Europe prior to that. And the era uh, prior to that is often called the, the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages, uh, which generally is viewed as a point in time in European history where not a lot was going on. Uh, so when we're talking about this Renaissance period or a rebirth period, uh, basically what it represents is after um, many centuries of seemingly not a lot going on in Europe, uh, people begin to take an interest in looking to the past. And when it talks about the revival of classical interest, what that's speaking to is looking to the times of ancient Rome, looking to the times of ancient Greece uh, for inspiration on how to move forward. Uh, there were a lot of challenging issues uh, facing Europe uh, at this time. And one of the things people sometimes do when times are tough is try to look to times from before uh, where they saw things as better, as possibly a way of finding a way forward. And so uh, to a large degree, that's that's what this period represented, was looking to the past to try to move into the future. Now, the location uh, where this period of Renaissance got started uh, was Italy, and, and maybe even more specifically into northern Italy. Uh, so for the rest of this lesson, just want to take a few minutes to speak to why would Italy be the jumping off point for a series of changes in Europe when it had spent hundreds and hundreds of years uh, without much changing. So as far as looking at reasons, I want to start first with the idea of thriving cities. Now, Italy was not the only place in Europe that had cities. There, there were cities in various parts of Europe. Uh, but the location of Italy meant uh, something quite different uh, for some of these Italian cities uh, compared to cities in other parts of Europe. Uh, it was a great location for trade. Uh, so it was really a, a, a trade hub uh, for Europe. And, and when, you, when you talk about significant cities in Europe, you're talking about places like Venice. Uh, Venice was a, a very significant uh, location as it related to trade uh, that was taking place uh, really throughout the world at this time, but especially as an entry point for Europe. And one of the things you were able to get in a place like Venice um, that was very different than other places is, is uh, you know, you had people traveling from the east uh, that uh, would sail into a place like Venice 
Um, not only did they have a lot of different products and, and different goods that people uh, could gain access to, uh, but you had people constantly coming uh, from different parts of the world, uh, all converging on this one place or in this one area. And so you had uh, just a lot of different ideas, a lot of different activity, just a lot of different things going on. Generally speaking, uh, when you have uh, that much diversity all converging in one place, uh, the likelihood that you're going to have new ideas sparked uh, or have people maybe think differently about things uh, goes up significantly. You know, if you want to think about uh, times today and in places that are, are more likely to, to be places where changes occur uh, compared to others, you know, just think about places in our country today, today like, say, New York City. Uh, New York City's significantly diverse, millions of people, uh, people from lots of different parts of the world uh, coming and going on a regular basis. Uh, chances are, if there's something to be found or something to be known or anything that can be thought of, <laughs> chances are you could find it there. Uh, whereas if you come to a, a smaller populated area, uh, take a town like, say, Yoder, Kansas, um, and, and, and think about the, the number of people that are there um, and, and the number of different ideas that might be circulating there, um, simply by virtue of having far fewer people and less direct connections to lots of other places, uh, you would tend to expect less going on there. And it doesn't mean that one is good and one is bad, but they're certainly different. And so when you look at locations in Europe where you would, been more, would have been more likely to see new ideas emerge, uh, a place like Italy a, a, and trade centers like Venice uh, were, were prime locations for that. But another big factor uh, for Italy with what would become the Renaissance uh, came from these cities and some of the people within these Italian cities uh, that we'll refer to as the merchant class. Uh, one of the things that you tended to find in these various, uh, especially northern Italian cities or city-states, uh, were merchant families uh, that, uh, depending on the city-state, uh, certainly varied family to family. Uh, but one thing that they had in common is uh, people uh, who uh, who were ambitious, people who were hardworking, people who were successful, uh, emerged as, as wealthy, influential, powerful citizens uh, within their cities. And, and that would feed into one of the characteristics that will become uh, a part of the Renaissance, which is an achievement-oriented oriented attitude, uh, an idea that, that you should be able to, to have power, you should be able to have prestige, you should be able to have influence based on, on your efforts, on your merits, uh, things that you have achieved. And, and so depending on the city-state, um, the leading family might change, uh, but they certainly had some, some common characteristics in terms of, of power and influence and achievement. Um, if you look at the city-state of Florence, for example, you probably get one of the most uh, famous or notorious families, merchant families from this era, the Medici family. And uh, even though uh, the city of Florence uh, was more of a, a Republican style uh, city as far as governing was concerned, uh, when the Medici family rose to power, uh, they were able to assumed quite a bit of control uh, over that city-state and really drove uh, where that city-state went. And uh, one of the things you also got with this merchant class um, and their wealth uh, was the choice to spend money supporting the arts. And when we look back and think about the Renaissance, one of the things we tend to, to focus quite a bit on was Renaissance art. And that only happens when there are people to support those artists. I mean, it's like any other profession uh, if you don't have people willing to financially support what the profession does, the profession doesn't exist. It's kind of like today, uh, you know, if you look at our country uh, with professional sports, uh, that's something that has been popular for many decades. And one of the things that tends to come with that uh, for the athletes that are able to participate, especially the good ones, is the opportunity to make a lot of money uh, because people are interested in it and are willing to support that financially. Uh, but we could have the best athletes in the world here and they wouldn't make a dime off of their sport if people weren't willing to spend money uh, to, to watch what they do and to support what they do. And so with the arts uh, being such a key aspect of the Renaissance, uh, a big part of what made that happen is you had families like the Medici that were willing to spend the money they had supporting what those artists did, hiring them to paint, hiring them to create sculptures. Uh, so that's a, an important thing that we'll be talking more about as we get to Renaissance art. Now, a third uh, key aspect of Italy as, as, as to why this was a location in Europe where, where the Renaissance got started uh, was just simply the geography. Uh, when you look at what was the inspiration for the Renaissance, uh, what you see is a look back to the classical civilizations of Greece and Rome. 
Uh, so what better place for something like the Renaissance to start than the actual location of those civilizations that people were looking back to? I mean, Rome is right smack dab in the middle of Italy. And if you go to the city of Rome, you see those ruins. I mean, you can see those ruins today. So you certainly saw those ruins uh, over 500 years ago. And so for people who were, were seeking this inspiration and were, were being driven by this inspiration, uh, it's very logical uh, that, that that would be most powerful in the place that had the most direct connection to those ancient civilizations. Now, something else, and this would uh, especially fit in with some of the, the ideas that came from ancient Greece, is during the, the rough period where this Renaissance uh, time took place, uh, you began to have um, manuscripts that uh, had been created, you know, in, in, at this point, you know, in excess of a thousand years ago uh, that had been lost. Uh, but there were circumstances taking place in other parts of the world that were bringing some of these manuscripts back. Uh, so not only did the geography of Italy uh, play into this, uh, but information was beginning to return uh, to these home base locations. Uh, so when you put it all together, uh, it should not be surprising that uh, Italy was going to be a place where changes happened and that it would be from Italy uh, that the Renaissance would ultimately spread throughout different parts of Europe. And that's what we're going to leave it for today. Uh, in the second installment of, of the Renaissance videos, uh, we're going to address uh, what it was that was in fact changing uh, so that you could more clearly or that you can more clearly identify uh, what life was like prior to the Renaissance uh, to how life was becoming through the Renaissance. Thanks.